Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler, uh, training officer at MixerJ, and today we're going to do an unboxing of the IHP cylinder. Um, so we're going to unbox the head unit, which comes separate from the cylinder. We've already took the cylinder out of the box. Um, so we're just going to take the head unit out, fit that on, and show you how easy it is to pipe up. So we're just taking the uh, top cover off the box. My colleague Isaac's removing that. So we've got some polystyrene packing just to support it. And then we've got the, uh, the top cover. So we're just going to lift the top cover off and reveal the head unit. So the most important thing when lifting the head unit is that there are two handles, one at either side. Because of the weight of it, approximately 33 kilos, it's a two person lift. So one hand goes on the handle and the other hand goes on the fan housing at the back. And it's a simple matter of lifting up. One of the most important things is lining up these two parts with the bottom part. And there are also four holes which line up with some uh, countersink nuts. And we use four 10 millimeter bolts to secure the head unit onto the cylinder. Another important point is don't fully tighten these in, leave a little bit of slack so you've got a slight bit of movement just to align the pipes up when you fit in the pipes. And that's what we're gonna do next. We'll put the bolts in and then we'll go through the pipes. So there's four bolts. The first one is just around there. The second one is just at the side of where the uh, connections are. Third one's here and the fourth one there. So there's not a bolt right around the back. They're within the front quadrant, so they're very easy, even if it's in a cylinder cupboard, to uh, put in. So the next part is attaching the pipework. Some of it already comes prefabricated, but there is some assembly on site, which will be typically flat face unions or compression joints. So care must be taken to do those, not over tight or under tight. So that's what we'll do next is put the pipework on. So the first section we're gonna put on is the top up pump, which also has a descaling port, and that fits down onto the bottom with a compression fitting. And again, we're just gonna put it on finger tight until we get the other pipes. And then once everything's lined up, we can tighten everything in. So the next section comes from the top up pump up to the head unit. And as you can see, we've got a slight flexi in there. We've also got a pre-fitted clip, which we're gonna screw onto the cylinder to support it and it's a flat face nut. So the clip has got a couple of little standoffs with two self-tapping screws just to secure it on. And before we tighten everything up, we're just gonna put these in. So the next section is the three-way uh, ball valve and that fits onto here with a compression nut and again we don't fully tighten it, just stand tight and again we've got a clip on there so we're just going to attach the clip the same as we did for the uh, other pipe, it's just a couple of self-tapping screws Again, not fully home, just until we get everything together and then we can tighten all the nuts up. So the next section of pipe comes from the three-way ball valve into the cylinder. And again, it's got a descaling port. Now, um, what I tend to do is just slightly put that on a couple of threads, line that one up, it pops in and then once you've got it in there the threads they're not binding they're not crossed so it'll tighten up and again until we get everything secured we don't fully tighten them so the last piece of pipe is the flexi which goes from the three-way ball valve onto the water outlet and these are flat faced uh, unions so they need a washer in there so we're just going to Pop that on slack, line that one up, and again, without getting them cross-threaded, just tighten, hand tight, and when we've got everything finally in, we can tighten them up using some spanners. 
So now we've got everything fitted loosely, we're just going to tighten them up and I use an adjustable spanner um, rather than using grips which is going to damage things. So the last bit of assembly, apart from uh, plugging the electrics in, is the uh, three-way ball valve motor and that simply fits onto the head, lines up and then there's a nut that tightens it in. So now we've got all the water uh, side assembled, we're going to connect up the electric. So we've got the top up pump, which is just a simple plug that uh, fits across. We've got the uh, three way motor. And then we've got the four connections. The immersion out and the power in, you can't get those mixed up because they're, uh, they're gendered. So basically we've got a female and a male. So the idea is we're connecting on the immersion heater and it plugs in and it's a quart turn and it locks in place so that won't come out. Similarly with the power cable, clicks in. We've, gone that, we've then got the sensor cable which is just a small two wire connection. And then we've got an ethernet cable. And then the last of the wiring is the mains input and a connection for third party timer control. So the last connections are, you've got your cold water inlet, your hot water outlet, your TMP, which obviously has got to be connected up as per G3 regulations. We've also got a condensate pipe. And again, that's got to be connected up properly. This condensate pipe um, can be trimmed to go into a, uh, a waste pipe and then going into a soil stack it must fall it's like any condensate pipe so if you've been fitting condensing boilers for the last few years just treat that like any condensing pipe so just before we uh, go through commissioning we've got to plug the mixer to gauge in and that just plugs into this little port here So another really important part of the commissioning sequence is making sure the auto air vent is open and then once the cylinder has been filled up and all the air's out, that must be closed off. That's part and parcel of the installation instructions. We must shut that auto air vent off. So the last part is putting on the uh, top cover. It's really important that the foam seal on the fan outlet sits inside there and the cover it's nice and neatly. It sits all the way down and the skirt is nice and tight. So we're going to secure the top cover with uh, four self tapping screws. I've already put um, two of them in round the sides but again they're within the front quadrant so it's just the two at either side of where the electric controls go that we just need to pop back in. So that's the top cover secured and the last bit would be to install the ducting assembly. 